I've been too nice to you guys talking about movies you might have actually heard of. That ends today, and I'm going back to my roots and talking about a low-budget sexploitation film from New York's underground scene in the 1960s. <laughs> you know, the kinds of movies that only freaks like me have heard of. Welcome to Exploitation Reviews, and me, Rob. Today I'm taking a look at Aroused from 1966. This movie was greatly influenced by Hitchcock's Psycho. <laughs> and by greatly influenced, I mean greatly rips off Hitchcock's Psycho. But that's okay, rip-offs are totally cool as long as you add something interesting. And what could be more interesting than some nice mamma jammas in a mirror? Actually, those aren't even the only interesting things about this movie. <laughs> Check out this first kill scene. What's that kid doing here? It's my brat. I didn't pay ten bucks to have a kid watch me. Get him out of here. Get out of here, you little bastard. Hmm, childhood trauma leads to a life of murdering women? Maybe this movie is actually a ripoff of Peeping Tom. <laughs> or maybe not. Maybe it's just crazy. Okay, so the story here is there's a killer targeting working gals, and we find out that this murder of this working gal in the shower at the beginning of the movie wasn't even the first one. Alice berates the police for not finding the killer of last month's girl. After yelling at the police, Alice heads back to her office, uh, or base of operations, uh, which is just a dive bar ran by a guy named Gus, and she informs him and the girls that the murderer is still out there and he's killed another one of them. The rookie detective Johnny follows her there, but unsurprisingly, no one working there wants to help him with his investigation. Yeah, cops and working guys don't actually have a working relationship. So Johnny goes home to his wife and get your goddamn knee out of the way, Johnny. Tell him, Barbara. Johnny, stop it. The next day, though, he goes back to talk to Alice and get your goddamn head out of the way, Johnny. The <sighs> cops always getting in the way of fun. But Alice informs him that she and Pat, uh, that was the girl in the shower at the beginning, uh, were actually lovers and she's willing to help him with the investigation. Johnny suggests they set up a kind of decoy to lure the killer out, and Alice says she can find one. The decoy plan doesn't quite work out, though. The girl walks around and looks pretty hot doing it, uh, but she doesn't manage to lure in that killer. Eventually, she and Johnny decide to call it a night. And then someone gets in the elevator with her. Looks like the lure caught the big fish. Ah, <laughs> uh, come on, lock the kid in the closet, huh? No! Please, no, Mommy, not in the dark. Johnny hears the alarm and gives chase, and the movie does have a number of surprises left up its sleeve, but that's enough out of me as far as plot goes. Let's talk some highlights. I really like the kill scenes in this movie. You know, the freeze frame, and then you hear the childhood trauma play over the still picture. Yeah, it's a really simple but very effective technique. Nice and creepy. And those aren't the only creepy scenes in this movie. There's this really great scene where Alice stumbles into the lair, or, you know, apartment of the killer, and he's got all these mannequin parts hanging around. Oh yeah, mannequins are always good for some creep factor. On the technical side of things, the cinematography here is pretty damn good. You know, lots of really dark shadows and reflections. It looks like a low-budget noir film. Yeah, pretty nice. And you know, for a movie like this, this low-budget exploitation thing, the acting here is actually pretty good. I mean, not all of it is good. I mean, Johnny's wife, for example, she can't act for But, you know, you know, aside from her, and even Johnny sometimes, a yeah, pretty solid effort all around. <laughs> and finally, the ending is awesome. I'm not going to tell you what it is, but it's awesome. But the movie's not perfect. Uh, like a guy spending some cash on some after-dinner entertainment, it has some shortcomings. Well, it's not really a shortcoming, but uh, for a sexploitation film, this is pretty light on the sex and nudity. Uh, that's okay, though. It's best to think of this film as a straight thriller, and as a straight thriller, it's pretty heavy on the sex and nudity, so, you know, if you have your expectations aligned in the right way, uh, you will not be disappointed. 
An actual shortcoming though would be the pacing. The film starts off strong and ends very strong, uh, but in the middle there's that decoy sequence that goes on for way too long, and I just don't think the filmmakers had quite the skill to give it much tension. Don't get me wrong, the decoy is super hot, so I don't really mind watching her walk around, and I have to admire the cleverness of a working gal having pants that zip down the back, but still goes on a bit long. Finally, and this again is less of a shortcoming and more of an expectations alignment remark, uh, there's not a whole lot of mystery here, so if you're looking for a whodunit, you're going to be a bit disappointed. This is more like a he done it, Which is fine, but you know, just know that going in. But, you know, for what it is, this movie's pretty cool. I mean, sure, it's not wall-to-wall -wall nudity like one of Michael Finlay's films, like The Kiss of Her Flesh or something. If that's what you're looking for, then just go watch The Kiss of Her Flesh again, because that movie's awesome. Aroused walks a kind of interesting line. It's sleazier than something like Alfred Hitchcock's Psycho, uh, while not being as sleazy as a Michael Finlay film. So if that sounds appealing, check it out. I mean, it's only about 80 minutes long, so like an evening with a working gal, it's not much of a commitment. 